Madam Acting Chairman. Oh, yeah. <coughs> 605. Call the meeting to order 605 on January 15th. The meeting is being videotaped oh, yeah. by the is local being access cable television. By the local cable access television. Um, Madam Acting Chairman, I don't have anything except for um, bills and warrants and payroll and excise and some um, exemption certificates and I think that's it for open session. And the budget, that's the only item. I don't have any minutes for approval this week. So if you would like to review it, I'd be happy to do that, answer any questions that you may have. And I assume that you'll defer any action to accept the budget until the chairman arrives. Yeah, that's fine. So I sent you the documentation by email um, uh, I think on Mar on January 6th and I explained in that email um, the proposed increases to the budget are as follows under appointed official that represents a 5% increase in my salary my contract expires June 30th 2020 so needless to say we'll have to enter into contract negotiations sometime between now and I would think you probably want to do it um, by April or May. Uh -huh. So I just plugged a number in there. It could be any number as a result of any negotiations. But I just want to be able to submit a budget to the town administrator by the 21st, which is the deadline for submitting it. The second increase is clerical salaries. That's primarily uh, reflecting the board's previously stated intention to change uh, Daniela's position from part-time to full-time. And this item may be subject to further changes due to ongoing negotiations between management and the clerical staff's collective bargaining unit. Um, I did receive one email that indicated it should be increased by 2% for the time being. Um, so there probably will be an adjustment made there. Um, under overtime, <clears throat> um, one of the clerks has a significant amount of overtime on the books, uh, 68 hours the last time that I looked, and uh, that individual has indicated she'd like to buy down some of her time, not all of it necessarily. Um, so I placed an item in there of two thousand um, dollars, <coughs> which would allow the buyback of some time. Uh, the fourth increase is in training. I believe everyone should be uh, upping their game as far as professional development. <coughs> I believe a better trained staff equals improved job performance and better public service as well. So. I would like to uh, provide training for the two clerical staff members and myself. Uh, another increase is web hosting. This is for hosting both your property record cards, the Patriot property system, and the assessor's maps going forward. Another increase is record preservation, which is a modest increase from $400 to $500. And it simply reflects the vagaries of the cost of doing business. I mean, it's only $100. Uh, seven is contractual services. This is the projected increase of Patriot Property software license fees. Um, and as I said in my email, I will finalize this figure. I sent an email out to Patriot Property asking them to let me know what next year's mm -hmm. license fees will be. But I made a reasonable estimate in the meantime. Office supplies is a $500 increase to reflect the actual costs uh, for fiscal 19. And dues and meetings is a $400 increase, which includes the addition of uh, Tammy and Daniela's Mass Association of Assessing Officers fees, which Member Bunker requested this year. So I'm 
going to project it into the budget for next year. Right, that was like a hundred dollars for the two of them. Along with projected additional meeting costs, because uh, I'd like again, I I want to promote their professional development, mm -hmm. which <clears throat> gets to the last item uh, that I increase, which is the annual school, the Mass Association of Assessing Offices offers its annual assessment school at UMass Amherst every summer. No one from our office has attended this educational program for over 10 years. Going forward, I want to make attendance for the school possible for any one of the staff members or myself, depending on availability, um, interest, and the work schedule. That's it. So if you have any questions, I'd be question. happy to answer them. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one, we'll start at the top. The five percent increase in your salary. Now, is that just a number you threw in there, or that's a, just a number that I'm plugging in okay. for the purpose of getting a budget submitted? We'll determine what that number is during the negotiation process. Okay. Um, and then we had. We'll skip over number two for now. When was the last time you looked at how much overtime Tammy has? I talked with her probably a month ago, but that hasn't changed. It hasn't changed for six months, so it's the same number. Okay, I'm just checking because you mm -hmm. put last time you looked. Like so like at that sixty-eight hours. I think I think she I think she bought down some time. I'm not sure if you used if she used any of it, but the last time I looked, it was sixty-eight. So it's either sixty-eight or less than sixty-eight. All right, can you find that out and let us know? Sure. Obviously training, now web hosting. But for me, did we ever actually go online? That's not live. Did we pay for it already? No. So we, we haven't, CAI. No, we, we paid them for um, developing the software, the upfront cost. And we're not, I mean, it's been what, six months? It's been a while. I don't know if it's six months, but it's been a while. Um, they came back to us with a um, mismatch list and uh, about four pages. And I asked, uh, I, I started looking at it, and I asked Daniela to take a look at the rest of the ones that I didn't finish. And you, I remember we discussed that uh, a couple of weeks ago, and you said you finished it. Mm -hmm. so. I'll have to take a look at that and report that back to them. We've been really busy with exemptions the last month. Yeah. No, I know. I was just curious since it was on here and we've paid them to do something. Just want to make sure our money's doing what they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Record preservation's minimal. And you're going to find out. Any idea? I'm sorry. You probably said this, but I just missed it. Mm -hmm. um, and you said you emailed Patriot Properties. Right. Do they give you a ballpark when they're going to figure it out? They, I haven't heard back from them yet, but I haven't checked my email okay. all afternoon. Office supplies, that is what it is. Dues and meetings. Oh. That's fine. All right, and then uh, I'm sure we, we're going to need Steve for number two on there, the clerical salaries, but with that, uh, the two percent you mentioned is that which you're assuming or under the impression that that might be what the, the clerical contract comes back at, or is that just the number they standardly use? That's the number they standardly used. Okay. I'm, I'm really not informed on how the negotiations are going. Okay. That's between the town administrator and the clerical union. But the assess the um, selectman's office sent us an email saying. For budgetary planning purposes, use ten percent. Use two percent. Okay, right now. that's. I thought I saw that email, but I just want to make sure that I understood it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of, now how much is our budget then going up? You know, we seem to have big increases when they want level funded spending. Level services. That's correct. Do you really see this being able to go through? That's my recommendation, yes. Mm 
and for the same just I mean I'll justify it to the finance committee and the selectmen as I just listed everything to you how much is the increase yeah, it looks like 10% 10, 10. Part of that being, as I said, going from a part-time position to right. a full-time position. Right. Do you have any questions, Cheryl, on anything other than number two? No. Okay. Um, might I suggest that the board go into executive session um, and then return to open session when it concludes executive session business, and hopefully Steve will be here by then. Okay, I move to move into executive session and, and reconvene in open session. For the stated purposes, for the record, to review applications for abatement or exemption under purpose 7 of Mass General Laws Chapter 59, Section 60, and to review and discuss strategy of pending appellate tax board cases relative to purposes three and seven of Mass General Laws chapter 59, section 60, because to do so in open session could have a detrimental effect on the board's litigating position. And I don't have any executive session minutes. For those reasons, move to executive session. Second. Roll, roll call. Member Bunker? Yep. Smith, yes. 630. <coughs> Um, Madam Acting Chairman, I think a motion would be in order to adjourn. I think you should do it to a time specific. You could say till Steve gets here, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take 15 minutes. 15 minute break. You take a 15 minute break? Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to make I'm, the motion? I'm thinking 10. I'm thinking 10. Yeah, let's do 10. Yeah, let me just find it. Yeah. Okay, because, so I'll make a motion. Because Nathan needs to know. Right. So we'll make a motion. Are we doing it? <laughs> yeah, motion to <laughs> adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Until? Until 6.40. 6.40 and reconvene at 6.40. And reconvene at 6.40. Second. Second. Roll call. Um, Just Member Bunker? Straight, straight <laughs> vote. Straight vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> uh, yeah. We are back in open session, Mr. Okay. Chairman. And applications for debate. Okay. Which were decided in the executive session. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Mr. Chairman, I had presented the budget to the board in open session, um, went through all the reasons that I had listed in the email that I had sent to the board. Yeah, um, I got that here somewhere. On January 6th, so the board um, didn't want to finalize the budget, approve the budget so we're all until here. you were here. Yeah, the full board. Yeah, I couldn't make that last one, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm listening. Um, do, you want, do you want to just go through the list again of the increases? Let me do that. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, I can find it. Uh, go and, ahead, I'll, and I'll just run down it quickly because I've done this once in open session, Mr. Chairman. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the projected increases are as follows. Number one, the appointed official, which is a, that represents a 5% increase in my salary. My contract expires on June 30th. Needless to say, we'll have to enter into negotiations right. uh, between now and uh, I would say April or May. So I'm just plugging a number in there and then once we negotiate right. a, a, con a new contract, that would be subject to change. Number two is the clerical salaries. Uh, the primary increase reflects the board's previously stated intention to change, uh, I'll name her by name, the principal secretary, Daniela Nilsson's position from a part-time to a full-time position. And this line item may be subject to further change due to ongoing negotiations between management and the clerical staff's collective bargaining unit because their contract is also up for renegotiation this year. Uh, number three, overtime. 
uh, <clears throat> the other clerk in the office has significant overtime on the books, 68 hours, more or less, probably a little less. Um, I would like to buy down a portion of that time, and the principal secretary is amenable to having some of that time bought down. So I put $2,000 in the budget for next year. Is that based on past practice? Well, that buying time down? The contract states you can uh, buy it down. either or. Either buy it down or allow the employee to have Compensated. time yeah. off at time and a half. And, the, and buying down is a time and a half also. I think it says that the, the option, option of the department head, but I'd have to check the contract for that. And number four, uh, training. I believe everybody uh, should up their game with professional development. I believe better personnel, better trained personnel improves job performance and uh, provides better public service overall. So to that degree, uh, um, <clears throat> I'm aiming to get additional training for the clerical staff and myself. Number five, web hosting. This reflects an increased cost uh, because next year, uh, as you know, you'll have the cost of hosting both your property record cards or the Patriot system and your assessor's maps. Number six is record preservation. That's a modest increase of $100, which simply reflects the vagaries of doing, the cost of doing business. Seven is contractual services. This is a projected increase of the Patriot Properties license fees. They always bump their fees up um, $500 to $1,000 every year, more or less. What, the contract fees? The license. The well, actual, me what I'm sorry, John. The license. Seven. Yeah. Contractual services. It was $9,014 in fiscal 19. It was $10,800 for fiscal 20. I'm projecting $12,000 or $1,200 increase. I'm expecting that's more than what it's going to be. Back up. Give me the line item that you're on. What's the four-digit line item that you're on? 4398. Contractual services. License fee. 5398. You said, you said four. Is Sorry. it five? 5398. That's right. Sorry. Yep. Contractual service. Sorry. Right. Yeah. 9014 right. last year, 10,008. Fiscal 20. And I'm projecting 12,000 for fiscal 21. So. $1,200 increase. So what, why does it say? Minus 1,200, isn't that plus 1,200? Yeah, that's the way the software that was sent down from the selectman's office does the calculation. It shows- So it's a, it subtracts an increase? Yeah, in fact, it's an increase. All those negatives are increases. And that's consistent with all budgets? That's the way the it's software- just, No, I understand that, it's just yeah. it doesn't make sense. I know, I no. agree, I agree. Okay. Office supplies. Number eight office uh, supplies yeah. is a five hundred dollar increase to reflect the actual fiscal nineteen costs. Um, and dues and meetings is a four hundred dollar increase, which includes a hundred dollar increase for Tammy and Daniela's subscription to the Mass Association of Assessing Offices, along with proje projected additional meeting costs. Number ten is the annual school, as you know, UMass Amherst uh, annual school sponsored by the Mass Association of Assessing Offices. Nobody from this office has gone in the last 10 years. I would like to be able to send either Tammy or Daniela or myself, whoever is available. Yeah, what, yeah I'm not amenable, I, I don't know about those guys, but you know, uh, if we have to pick up your costs, that's fine. But you know, we do enough, you know, you're general certified and such. Mm -hmm. There's no need for that if you would go to that. Yeah, I'm suggesting TMU yeah. or Daniel. But yeah, if they could fix a course up, sure. But you know, you and I, I, I used to go to that when I was with my other municipalities, and that's good, but you know, you're a general certified, you know, well versed in your position, that gets expensive. I agree. And that's it. <clears throat> okay. So the the total increase from uh, twenty uh, over twenty one is twenty six grand on ninety yes. one. Mm -hmm. And, and that's probably the largest increase over the last so many years, right? Yeah, it's from part, primarily from part-time to full-time position for the principal secretary. Right. Uh, 
That would be thirteen thousand. Yeah. Do you want that Danielle right to go? This is Danielle's position, right? For the full time. Yeah. It, it's solely needed. That's for sure. Um. Okay, and on yours, we'll go in, we'll, uh, before the warrant or, or the town meeting thing, we'll go in an objective session and we'll negotiate that. Mm -hmm. I got some thoughts on that too. Um, the other stuff I don't know what to say about it. You know, it's tough to predict. Right. You know, it, it, you know. Um, <clears throat> it is a budget. It's a budget. It's a projection. And I think it's a reasonable projection. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you know, self-serving whatever, but um, the uh, it's it's a necessity to uh, for us to keep our licenses up, you know, dental certified with the Commonwealth. So it's good. There's plenty of money in that if that goes through the training, and for, for the gals too. So it, you know, it's tough to say. It's a large increase, but like you said, uh, if you took out, I haven't figured it out. If you took out the increase from, from part to full time, that would probably go down to what maybe thirteen thousand. Yeah. So it's fifty fifty percent for that. Yeah, yeah. And if it was thirteen thousand, the increase would be typical from year to year on our past budgets. With, you know, within a couple percent, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. Where do we? Where do we stand on? Um, I haven't looked at. It. I've gone online for the cards and stuff. Where do we stand? That gentleman that came in and made that presentation on the wall yes. here. The assessors max. The assessors maps, <clears throat> and are we going? Are we getting that full body of work that he showed us? You know, with all the layers or not? Yes. The uh, are they online now? No. No. Uh, that question was asked earlier in open session. Uh, the company came back with a, a mismatch list. With about I'm estimating four pages long. Was it more than four pages? Four to six pages long. What's what is that? Mismatch list. Sorry. <clears throat> um, RSS's database map and lot numbers do not agree with everything that they have in their map database. Right. Um, I found one reason for that is because of the Pearl Road subdivision. Remember that was the Fall River Savings Bank, I think, and there was a subdivision plan that was submitted and I believe recorded. Probably, and so, yeah. And so we changed our assessment maps. Some of that data historically stays in the mapping database, yep. so we can actually see the traced over version in broken lines of the old subdivision. Well, because the, that subdivision went bankrupt and was purchased by another developer, um, I believe either the zoning bylaws changed or the plane board um, made it a condition that the lots be bigger, so they create a new subdivision. Plan. To be approved as a buildable road someday? Uh, yeah, that's another issue. Yeah, um, so we so that's a mismatch because we have the underlying and, layer of say forty or fifty lots, and then the actual does that current assessors maps that are about thirty lots, and so they don't match. Does that mismatch show up like if, um, for example, I use the Brockton uh, the new GIS system a lot, and that mismatch might show up on the Brockton thing. The more you jig into it, you know, when when you when when you zoom it up. Mm -hmm. Then the meets and bounds and all that good stuff starts showing. Mm -hmm. When you first get into it, nothing shows. Or, you know, may, maybe the root number, um, but like not even the structure. When you when you get down into it, it all comes up. The meets and bounds and all that good stuff. That's what is that, is that when that would, the, the, the bottom layers would show up, like you know, like a wrong map and root mm -hmm. or, or meets and bounds if a lot changed. Probably, I mean, in other words, how, how would that affect? That's probably yes That's and no answer. You will see. You won't see the meets and bounds. From the bird's eye view, right. When you zero in, you will see the meat. That's the same as in most of those. You don't get that to you. Right? You may not see the underlying subdivision from the bird's eye level, but when you come down, you definitely see it. So they knew that was there, uh, that mismatch you called it, uh, like in that pearl subdivision, because it was uh, the map. Uh, the map sizes, uh, the, the, sorry, the lot, lot sizes changed. Uh, what happened, Steve? When we were close to launching it online. They thought that they had scrubbed it. I looked at the information. We had found some discrepancies in the office. There were some Commonwealth of Massachusetts parcels that didn't have parcel ID uh, numbers on yeah, them. Yeah. We and we corrected everything that we thought needed to be corrected. And 
just before they launched it, they found these mismatches, and it was extensive. And was it a consistent mistake of like that, say the pro, like new, neural subdivisions, or was that That's no? definitely yeah. one, and probably other lots that have been subdivided. And I, I told you, when, when I came in tonight, I'm doing that work up on uh, Plum Street uh, from my, out of my office, and I noticed on the, on the map book, I asked you about that, the, the, the map set that we have, they're the old ones. How long ago those changed? The, 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 the maps might be right, but the roots are all off. Is that 10 years ago? They change every year. But when no, 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 no. The whole, no not, not just one to two, John. I, I know what I'm doing. I'm talking the whole, say, map 65 or whatever. Yeah. They don't change. It changes if you add a lot of, you know, the lot size or you add a new lot. But lot 65 is still lot 65. But this, the whole, the whole street has changed, so those maps must be that I have 10, 12 years old. Oh, they very well could be. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what you have. So, yeah. but I'm saying, I'm hoping all the stuff got when that would go. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're up to date. Yeah. Okay. Well, you and I looked at them at the at the counter. Those lots were some divided. Yes. Yeah, 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 I know that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you want me to make a well? We can't until we approve the laws. Or is that is that is that approved without uh, under the pretense that we're going to negotiate? Yes. Okay. Want me to make a motion then? Well, be before we do that, yep. I have a problem with number two. I still can't support going from part time to full time for the same reasons I, I gave last year, which. And yeah, that's, you know, we'll have to talk about that, but, um, and, you know, obviously your opinion is valued, but. Um, I've been doing this too long. In, in my opinion, we, we could use two and a half people in there. It, it, not just one and a half. Um, if you want to go back and forth on listing why, I, I'd, I'd be glad to do it. It's obviously, there's obviously a need for that for a, a whole host of reasons. But, you know, training, longevity, um, you know, you, you learn more on the job. And, and, you know, John will tell you we're busy in there. I'm not sure we got that opinion why it shouldn't not warrant it. Why, why, why don't you enhance us? It's the same stuff as I stated last year. I think we still have some some bumps we need to work out in the office that we probably shouldn't go into in depth to, because I think if we did, we'd have to go into executive session, or I think it's purpose one. Yep. Um, but I do think we still have some kinks to work out before I can wholeheartedly support it. Do I think that the office is busy? Absolutely. I don't dispute that. I don't deny that. But I don't think right now, just making part time to full time, and it's nothing personal, Daniela. Um, but, but I don't think making a part time to full time okay. is is going to solve our problems right now. Yeah, we're not. I don't know what problems you're referring to. I'm talking about the daily routine and the paperwork and the exemptions and all that stuff. But let me just ask this without being sarcastic. Both John and I, you know, obviously you've heard it four thousand times. We've been doing this for a long time, and we're both qualified exceptionally qualified to say that it's warranted. I understand, but like I said, if if you want to go into details, we'd have to put it on the agenda to go into executive session and discuss it. I think it's under purpose one, so I... Well, it depends on what we do with the... I can make a motion to... How does that work, John? You can make a motion to approve the budget as submitted. Um, it has to be seconded, and then you can have further discussion on the motion but I would, I would ask that you pass it. Right. And I can state. What does that do for? What does that do? Twenty first. Yeah. Twenty first. I and agree. I, I would like to see your full time too. Right. I do um, agree on that. It's my bad. I couldn't make it last week, so it would have to. You know. Not a problem. No. It's here. Yeah. I mean, you guys can vote on it, and you guys can both agree. I can say no, and it's no. It, it's I respect that. Just that I, you know. No, um, I understand. It's it's time constraint also. No, it's that, but it's just that you know. I'm, I'm just not sitting here making this stuff up. I know how you know, I know. You know, you, you, you're in there more than I am, but it's how the office works, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the numbers and, you know, the, the duties and all that good stuff. If, and I'm all serious. If it was up to me, I'd have her go full-time, and I'd bring a part-time person that just did the stone that wears all the hats, does, does some measurements, does some exemptions. He's a guy that's learning on the fly, but Joe Gibbons over there got money to bring a guy in that serves everybody's needs, you know? That's what I'd like to see, but for now, most, because we, we had two full-timers since I've been kicking around here, you know, and, and Gene left and that guy, whatever. But um, most assuredly, 
the, the office deserves. The, and, and the gals do good work, so that could be enhanced by more time and learning more or quicker or whatever. And, you know, I, I damn well know there's a lot of stuff to learn in there, you know. I can say with certainty in open session that one reason, one reason alone for going from part-time to full-time is automotive vehicle excise abatements that we process for enterprise rent a car. Right. We get hundreds of them. Right. And we abate them, we adjust them, and then we get a new commitment of bills and we go through that cycle right. almost on a monthly basis. How many would you say? How many get? commitments do we get in all? Seven, eight? Yeah, seven or eight. Yeah. You know, we get them over different years. <clears throat> all right, so listen. But that's, you know, put a, that's put a real burden on the office. And other work isn't getting done. And we can't just continue to kick the can down the road. And we can talk about how, our I, different philosophies of how to manage that office. I don't have any problem with that. But I'm speaking from the point of view, as you said, Mr. Chairman, I've been doing this for over 30 years. There's no question in my mean, mind yeah. that there's a need. No, 100% so. Um, the... Um, I would just say that you know I'd like to uh, put this up uh, the motion tonight only because you know what you said and what I feel I mean, we heard Paul and what she feels and that's fine she's entitled mm -hmm. to her opinion. Absolutely. It just that you know like yourself, um, I I wasn't thinking about the, the 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 excise commitments and such. That's one piece of the pie, but it would just make the workload a little bit easier and you know whatever that means. But I think it's needed and like I said twice already, if it was up to me, I put it from another half a person. More. Which, which I agree with, but I'm not asking. No, no, we're not, that, 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 that might be, you know, nine years down the road, and we're long gone or whatever, but I, 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 I'm not being facetious. I think there's a need for a, another full-time and another half, half a person. So I'll make a motion to, um, to accept uh, the preliminary budget as um, Proposed, except for the, we'll, we'll go into executive session regarding the appointed officials' uh, pay grade and the uh, uh, the new contract for the next three years. Um, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Me. Okay. That's all I have for open session, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Everything else has been discussed either in open session or in executive session. I have a, I have a question. Do we have to go? You want to wait till next time on, on this abatement here? We can go back into executive session. Well, is this for FY20? We got time. We'll wait till next time. All right. Put this on top of your pile. I have a question sure. on this one. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. It's no big deal. Nothing. Yeah, no yeah. big deal. Yeah. So we all set? Yes, sir. We are. It's Mr. Chairman. Just well, I'm just hiding upstairs and I'm getting out of half my room. Are you it? So yeah. Jeez, I can do that more often than right? Yeah. Am I adjourning? Somebody adjourn it to uh, me. Uh, I'll make a, a motion. <laughs> I'll second, third, and fourth that. Second. To adjourn. Second, all in favor? Yep, 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 yep. yep. 7 p.m.